Hi, this is Professor Cummings coming to you with another video on the four kinematics equations. And in this video, I want to show you an application of the equations. If you're curious about how to derive them, I have some videos in the past that you can look up. But in this one, I actually want to solve a problem using the four kinematic equations. Okay, so what we have here are four kinematic equations. You know, we de derived these in another video, so if you want to go back and, and check that out, it's in a playlist you know, under kinematics and dynamics. We've got our four kinematics equations. And what I want to do is show you a problem actually using these kinematic equations. So let's say we have a tower. And in this tower, we're up at the top. And we've got some big object, you know, a big beach ball or some, you know, not a beach ball, some some object that we're going to throw out of the this tower. You know, now let's see, we know that the tower is 50 feet tall. And we know our acceleration due to gravity is 32.2 feet per second square. So we got a height and we have an acceleration. And we can say this acceleration is a constant acceleration since it's, you know, due to gravity. And when we throw this, ball, we're going to give the ball an initial velocity of 18 feet per second. So what we want to know, since so we throw this ball to the ground, is how long does it take and what is the final velocity just before it touches the ground? And how will we go about setting up this problem? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to just organize ourselves, organize our thoughts and put together a plan. So what do we have? We know that we've got an acceleration due to gravity. We've got a constant acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared. We know we've got a height or a delta s of 50 feet and we have an initial velocity of 18 feet uh, per second. So we know how fast this thing is actually coming out of the ground. And for the sake of just our, our coordinate system, we'll just say that down is positive. Okay, so we've got the all of our givens, and what we need, all the essentials. Uh, let's see, so what we're left to find is the velocity just before hitting the ground and the time that it takes to make this trip. So we've got our problem laid out, a little more organized. So now we need a strategy. So we've got two unknowns, you know, time and our final velocity. So we're going to need two equations in order to solve for these two unknowns. So we're going to find for one unknown and then use the uh, solution to that equation to solve for the second unknown. And there's one uh, exception to that, and I'll show you in, in, in a few minutes. But this is going to be our strategy. We know we've got two unknowns, velocity at the end, just before hitting it. So we have an initial velocity, and we don't know our final velocity. And we don't know how long this trip is going to take, but we do know the height, and we do know our acceleration is constant. So... That takes us to our four kinematic equations. Again, we have everything that we have given, our acceleration due to gravity. We've also got the height, you know, a delta S. We can just go ahead and call this, this height is just a delta S. So we just say delta, whoops, delta S is our height. And we have an initial velocity. So let's see which equations apply to this. You know, so we're going to try and find for one unknown, and then we're going to look for a second equation that we can apply and get the second unknown. And so let's see, if we look at equation number four, this gives us an initial velocity. It also gives us, we know the acceleration, and we have a delta S, an initial versus a final height, which you know, the delta S is going to be 50 feet. And that equation can get us to our final velocity, the velocity just before we hit the ground. Now once we know that velocity, we can look at equation number three, where we also have a initial and final velocity. We have our acceleration and we can solve for the time that it takes to go through this trip. So we actually can solve this problem using equations number three and equations number four. So we solve equation number four, for a final velocity, use that final velocity in equation number three, and then we can solve for our time. Now, that's we're not done. That's that's one way we can do that. There's an, another way we can approach this same problem. We can still start off with 
problem number four, or equation number four, again, because we know that we've got an initial velocity, our acceleration, our delta t, our delta s, our change in height, and we can get our final velocity from there. But we can also apply that to this equation, where we've got a final velocity that we would get from this equation here. We've got an initial velocity, and we've got a delta s. And if we solve this for the time, we can end up you know, getting the time that it takes to make this trip. So we can solve it using equation four and equation number one. So that's a second possibility of solving the problem. Another method, again, yeah, there's there's still more. We have our you know our delta s, you know, our, our height of 50 feet. We have our initial velocity, we also have our acceleration, but here we actually have time in two equations or in in two components, two terms in the equation. So if we solve this equation for our time, we can then apply it to this equation, solve for our final velocity, and then we've got the other unknown. We could also solve it using this with our final velocity, or excuse me, our initial velocity and our acceleration, and have a final velocity. Again, based on the time. So, so equation number two, even though it's a little bit more complicated because it's got a t and t squared, it can actually solve it two ways. With equations number one and equation number three. And then we've got this method where we can solve for our final velocity using equation number four, and then solve for our final our our time for the trip using equation number uh, number two. So equations two and four. So what we saw is there's several different strategies we can take. You know, we know we're going to have to use two equations because we've got two unknowns. So it's just the nature of, of algebra. We know that there's two equations. You're going to need two unknowns to solve it. But with four kinematic equations, it comes down to what information do you have given and what are you trying to find? So you need to lay out a, a strategy, and it's best to put this in writing, write it actually into your problem so that you can not only know what you're given, but what you're trying to find and how you're going to approach it before you start doing the mathematics of the equation. So let's just go ahead and solve this with the first method that we chose. We had equation number four and equation number three. So we've got the initial velocity, you got our height of 50 feet. And we've got our acceleration. So we've got our initial velocity, we've got our acceleration, and we've got our height of 50 feet. And that'll get us our final velocity squared. We can plug this into our equation. And we end up with a final velocity of 59.532 feet per second. Now, taking that final velocity, we can actually look at this equation. We can solve it. You know, again, subtracting the uh, initial velocity from both sides and dividing by our acceleration, we solve for time, and we end up with time is equal to the difference in your velocities over the acceleration. And we have all of this information, our acceleration, our initial velocity, and we solve for our final velocity, so it's 59.532. And we make sure our units all cancel. And we've got acceleration, we can do this. So we end up with the units all check out, and it solves in 1.29 seconds. And the same goes for this one as far as the, the units all checking out. So again, that's only one method of solving this problem. Like so with the four kinematic equations, you should be able to solve this you know, a variety of ways. So why don't you go ahead and, and try it out? You know, Let me know in your comment section if this was helpful. And if it was, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can also come to my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter, but a lot of people are getting a lot out of a uh, Google Plus page under uh, skills and manufacturing education, as well as uh, the engineer's reference on Google Plus. This is Professor Cummings. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.